Excellent. Welcome everyone. Hello everybody, how are you? Thanks for joining us. We're, um, we're live now. We are on Facebook Live today. And um, this is Christine Citrano. I am your 2020 Florida State President and I welcome you to this wonderful Tuesday virtual event. And I am super, super excited about our speaker today. Um, we have Jennifer Cassetta, who is coming to us live from beautiful Santa Monica, California. And um, a little bit about Jen. She is a national speaker. She is an author. She has written a book and she's working on her second, but she has a book out called Hear Me Roar. She is a self-defense expert and a heart a health and empowerment coach. And she has a mission which, Jen, I hope you will uh, indulge me, but I wanna say this mission because I think this is just the greatest. My mission, this is Jen, my mission is to help people feel strong, safe, and sexy. Hallelujah to that. <laughs> Please help me welcome Jennifer Cassetta. It's all yours, Jen. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Christine. And to all the women of Florida, Florida's chapter, Women's Council of Realtors, thank you so much for having me today. I'm very excited to be here and chat with you all. Um, I see a bunch of you on right now. So uh, thank you for being here. I know taking an hour of your day um, is a big deal. Right. So, but to join in community and to learn a little bit um, about resilience today is going to be really fun. So I would invite you to honestly just relax. If you have a pen and you like to take notes, great. Um, if not, we can make sure we get you the slideshow if you'd like um, at the end. Also, um, we're going to be doing a lot of interaction. Right, so I, I again welcome you to use the chat box if you know how to. There should be on your bar a little chat. And if you click that, it'll be up on your right hand side of the screen. So why don't you go ahead and do that now so it's in there because I'm gonna be asking you a lot of questions like this first one, where are you from? Hi. Um, so why don't everyone go to the chat box and just say, I, I'm assuming a lot of you are in Florida, but where in Florida? Where are you calling in from this morning? Naples, Miami. I'm in Santa Monica right now, so I'm three hours behind you. We got Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Atlantis, Panama City. Okay, we're spread out a little bit. Awesome. And I know for some people in Florida, it's actually 10 a.m. Is that correct? That's right. right. Yeah, very confusing, but um, <laughs> great. Palm Coast, excellent. All right, welcome everyone. Again, today we're going to talk about resilience. Um, I found this amazing. Um, Hang on one second. There we go. This awesome, um, I just have to be able to see my screen really quick. This is my favorite definition by far of resilience. <sighs> the equality that enables some people to get knocked down by life and come back stronger than ever. I can't read it, you guys, because <laughs> the chat box right in the middle. <laughs> anyway, they overcome failure, and then you can, Jen, you can yeah. slide that chat box off to the side, or you can just uh, drop it down if you need to. Thank you. I, it's not happening for me, but... Um, Would you like me to read it? <laughs> please. <laughs> Resilience. The quality that allows some people to be knocked down by life and come back stronger than ever. Rather than letting failure overcome them and drain their resolve, they find a way to rise above from the ashes. There we go. Thank you so much, Christine. <laughs> Little glitch. Um, okay, so I found this on psychology today while I was researching for the next book that I'm writing called The Art of Badassery. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background um, as we continue, as it becomes very relevant. But this just spoke to me on so many levels. I feel it in my bones. And I hope it does for you too. But notice something in the definition, that it's some people. 
And I find that really, I was just really curious about that. Why some people and not others? Why do some people bounce back from struggles, challenges, hardships, global pandemics, <laughs> and other people wind up getting crushed or crumble or even give up um, when faced with hardship? In the chat box, what are your thoughts on that? I'd love to know why some people and not others. I think I've narrowed it down to two major factors, but if you have, okay, great. Thank you, Rebecca. Mindset, absolutely something we're going to cover today. Anyone else? Anything else that you can think of? Fears, determination, faith. Oh, I love that. Yeah, attitude, inner strength. This is so beautiful. It makes me want to cry. Faith and support system, internal strength. Absolutely. All of those things are right. Um, to break it down in a really simple two bucket kind of way, um, I would say the first one is practice, right? Have you had a lot of practice getting knocked down by life? I know that I have. Um, and I'll share some of those knockdowns. Um, in my past. Um, and I'm sure everyone here on this call has been knocked down too. The more that we get knocked down, perhaps the easier it is to get up. Maybe the first time we're out like a light, we're licking our wounds and slowly we crawl back up. Maybe the second and third time we get up, we take a knee and we look around, get our grounding again and rise. And by the third, fourth, fifth time that life is coming in with a tidal wave, perhaps it's a lot easier to bounce back up. I know, again, that resonates with me and I hope with you too. The other, the other is choice, right? Choice and I would also say prevention. Um, and those are the things that we're really gonna cover today. So, um, again, okay, here we go. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my story. <laughs> um, back, on, back in 2000, and this is just showing my age a little bit, I started martial arts and it started with one class. I fell madly in love with it. And in that year, um, it was a beautiful sunny Tuesday morning. I showed up for work, downtown Manhattan, got out of the subway, looked up and there were holes in the World Trade Center with big black smoke coming out. Um, as I, as you can imagine, was in complete and utter fear right? And chaos. I got to my place of work. And to make a very long story short, because I will be sharing the full story with you on another day, hopefully in August. Um, to make a long story short, um, when I got there, um, I wasn't allowed up in my building. And very shortly after the first tower fell, I got pushed into a utility closet as people were swarming the building um, for shelter. In that moment, paralyzation took over my body, complete fear and utter terror, as you can imagine. For the first time in my life, I really felt like I was going to die. I wound up learning a lot about fear and how fear hijacks your brain, which I'll share with you in a bit. And again, to make that day very quick, very short story, um, after that, we got kicked out of that building, went from building to building to building. Finally, I got to the martial arts studio that I was training at for that year where I finally found safety and shelter. I was able to breathe and relax. Now, fast forward for the next few years, in, basically in that next year, I decided that what I wanted to do was this martial arts training. How can I make a living doing this? Um, I just loved it so much. And obviously I was out of a job because that building that I worked at no longer stands to this day. Um, in that, in that year, I started to feel these mental, physical, and spiritual benefits of the martial arts training. Mentally, I started to feel more confident again, right? I was getting my confidence back little by little, learning these amazing life-saving skills. Physically, my body was actually getting stronger, and I started to feel this mind-body connection. And spiritually, I started to feel grounded again, connected. Um, you know, as you can imagine, in that year and probably more after that, my, um, my, my body was fried, my, um, my mind, my spirit, everything just felt like very on edge. Um, I remember going through periods of it, anxiety and stress and depression and all kinds of things. And what really wound up saving me was this martial arts practice. Um, and this is what I 
have now based all of my teachings on. So in that, in, there was a 10 year period basically where almost, and I'm not even exaggerating, every single day I showed up and I stepped onto that mat and I did the work. I did the physical, the mental and the spiritual work because we also did um, meditation as a big part of martial arts as well. I learned how to heal my body through food and nutrition. And I went back to school to become a health coach and later on to get my master's degree in nutrition. All the while having a private practice where I taught people how to um, take care of their bodies, how to take care of their minds. I went and devoured self-help books and went to Tony Robbins seminars and did all I could to work on mindset um, as well as the physical, right? And really learn the mind-body connection. And that's what I've just found has been so sustainable right? For myself, like I said, I healed myself, but also for my clients. So that was a 10 year period where I went from white belt to third degree black belt in a martial art called Hapkido while building my private practice in New York. The second decade, I would say, of my professional life. Now I moved out to sunny California. Um, I worked with bigger groups and I really wanted to get that message out there in a bigger way. So I started public speaking about five years ago. And um, speaking mostly on empowerment, resilience, badassery, all of these things have common themes to me. And I like to give people practical tools to feel more strong, more safe, and more, yes, sexy, but we can also use confidence <laughs> because I find sometimes, especially with the um, millennial crowd, they've, sex, the word sexy can be very polarizing. <laughs> so I've, I've been careful not to use that as much, but to me, sexy is an inner confidence. And that's really what I'm talking about. So strong, strong, um, both mentally and physically, safe from harm, safe from lifestyle-related diseases, and then yes, sexy, confident um, from the inside out. So today we're going to take a mind, body, and spirit approach to resilience, right? I had a little chat with Rebecca right before we all got on live, and I heard some good news about the real estate market in Florida, how it's already bouncing back, which is super relevant to today's talk about resilience. Um, the market seems resilient, right? Able to bounce back quickly and not crumble and because of you, right? The people behind the market, really, that's what's driving it. So I'm excited for you all. Um, and again, I just wanted to check in. There, when I work with clients, whether I'm doing health coaching, whether I'm teaching self-defense, whether I'm creating a, crafting a keynote for, for a talk, for an event, um, again, I'm always gonna take this mind, body, spirit approach. And first, when we're, he when we're thinking about um, healing. Say I'm working with a client and they come to me for weight loss. We want to identify the things that impede weight loss. We want to identify the blockages to weight loss or to healing a disease or um, right to uh, healing someone's confidence even. right? We want to see what are the things that's blocking that so we can peel those away, limit them, avoid them when possible. Make sense? Thumbs up if you're with me. Good. Um, so for resilience, the biggest thing is stress, right? Stress is what's happening right now. And you can call it fear. You can call it anxiety. You can call it uncertainty. Um, but what it's doing is creating stress in our minds and our bodies. It's important to realize acute stress versus chronic stress. Okay. Acute stress is boom, in the moment. And acute stress can be very helpful. For example, um, back in the day, way back in the day, if a tiger was chasing you, um, fear would set in and uh, adrenaline is going to be, be running through your body. And I'll explain actually the fear response in a little bit more in depth. Um, but you get the picture, right? So boom, adrenaline, now there's more blood and oxygen to your limbs and you can run faster and avoid danger. Maybe in modern times, it's stepping out to the, onto the sidewalk and realizing a bus is coming and you get that rush of adrenaline to move you back to safety. Make sense? Chronic stress, on the other hand, does not do the body good, right? Chronic stress over time can lead to 
mental health disorders like depression, like anxiety. Um, I work with a lot of clients, um, teenage clients specifically that are dealing with depression, anxiety, depression, anxiety, they always go hand in hand. Um, so yes, that, that can be exacerbated from chronic stress in the body. On a physical level, chronic stress can lead to, um, it can manifest in our bodies as inflammation. And um, I know Florida is a very healthy state, so we're going to talk a lot about physical health on this. And I um, also just want you to know to if you have any questions or want me to clarify anything, please go to the chat box and put it in there. I am watching it. Um, so yes, chronic stress over time could lead to chronic inflammation. And those of you that know this, chronic inflammation can lead to a host of lifestyle-related diseases. It can relate, uh, stress can lead to digestive issues, people that get IBS and IBD, um, inflammatory bowel disease, and those kinds of things. That can be exacerbated by stress. Sicknesses, illnesses, all kinds of things um, that are going wrong in the body, right? Dis ease in the body is always exacerbated by chronic stress. So we really need to ways, preventative ways, right, that we can manage these really stressful times. Right now, I'd love for you to check into the box. Um, I love doing, when things feel very subjective, like, oh my God, I'm so stressed out. Giving it a number is a very um, objective way, some way we can get da data, right? This is how I work with clients. On a scale of one to 10, how stressed do you feel right now? That's what I'd like to know from you. Um, 10 being super stressed out about what's going on, the uncertainty, everything. One, I got this, I'm pretty chill. Got it, five, four, six, four, pretty average so far, seven, five, six, three, Maureen. I want to hang out with her. Six, six, seven, three, Yolanda, same. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, now the question is, so it's good. This is two. Very nice. One, Michelle's super zen. Um, very good. So, so here's the thing. When you're feeling super stressed out and things seem completely, uh, you know, overwhelming, check in with yourself. How, how stressed do I feel on a one, one to 10 right now? Okay, next question. How resilient do you feel on a scale of one to 10? Resilient, use that beautiful definition that I couldn't read for you and Christina to read. <laughs> the ability to bounce back. Wow, nine, nine, 10, nine, 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 10, eight, nine, 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 six, amazing, nine, 10. Notice that these numbers are way higher on average than the first. And that is amazing, right? That leader is made here. Awesome. This, this is proof, right? Proof that we are all, um, as a community, as the WCR of Florida, we are all going to get through this together. Fantastic. And maybe that's because of the news out, uh, about the economy bouncing back, um, but I hope it's more of an inner feeling that that's how resilient you feel no matter what was going on in the market. Um, okay, so we have a cute, now I just wanna explain a little deeper about what happens in the brain when stress takes over. So again, I learned this back on 9-11. Um, well, I, I experienced it on 9-11. I didn't actually learn about it till probably a decade later when I started to dig a little deeper. When we are under trauma, fear, stress, um, perhaps in the beginning weeks of all of this, when it felt really uncertain, like extremely uncertain, don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, I, I know realtors don't exactly lose their jobs, right? It's you're, you're, you're technically an entrepreneur. Is that yes? Um, so I get that because I feel that I, I am an entrepreneur as well, but it still was extremely scary to me because I realized that the event business was pretty much going away overnight. Um, I didn't realize, know how exactly I was going to make this work, but I did feel resilient. So in those moments, again, all through your life, you can identify areas where you've been in that moment. Uh, the amygdala, right? Say it with me, amygdala. So, that, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Gets triggered. It's the old part of the brain. They call it the reptilian part of the brain. 
Um, and that's your fight or flight center, right? And it's in the back of your head here. So that's getting triggered when extreme stress and extreme trauma takes over. When that happens, again, these stress hormones are gonna be pumped into your body, adrenaline and mainly cortisol and norepinephrine, okay? Again, in the short term, could be powerful, could help, um, but when we are living there, right, when the stress is chronic and not going away, then we remain in this fight, flight, or freeze situation. Now, on 9-11, the freeze took over, and I, I, I hope no one there has, on this call has experienced it because it's a really scary feeling. Your body just feels paralyzed completely. Um, I, you know, sidebar, you know, I teach self-defense and um, I have been reading studies that this happens to a lot of women um, while they're being sexually assaulted. Um, freeze takes over their body. And um, this is when we hear a lot of people go, oh, why didn't she fight back? And it's like, hello, this is what's going on in the body, right? Complete paralyzation. Fight is maybe you're getting defensive right? You want to kind of fight. You're feeling super stressed out and it could be you're taking it out on somebody, maybe your partner or someone at home and just feeling very defensive lately. Or perhaps um, you want to just flee. You just think like, I can't wait for my next vacation. I want to get out of here. I need to get or just get outside. I want to run, right? That's that flee response. And also the freeze right now, not just physical par paralyzation, but a lot of us will find ourselves um, in front of a computer staring at it, not knowing what to do next. Um, I know I've, I was like that in the first few weeks for sure. So I want you to ask yourself right now, during this whole thing, but also look back into your past. During times of trauma, times of immense stress or fear and hardship, where do you go? Where do you tend to go? Now, each time could be different. Or do you tend to lean towards one or the other? And I'd love for you to share in, in the chat box if you're willing. Fight, got it. And uh, next time maybe you're about to go off on your husband or, or partner just because you're feeling super stressed, you can say, honey, it's just my amygdala getting triggered, <laughs> okay? <laughs> And, and honestly, when you understand why this is happening, it just gives you a little more power. It gives you a little more choice. Flight to fight, freeze, fight, fight, fight. We got a lot of fighters in Florida. I like this <laughs> feistiness. <laughs> fight or freeze depends on the situation. Absolutely, absolutely. That is, makes 100%, LOL, fight, <laughs> yeah. Um, I get that and, and I've done the same. Okay, so again, just another little tip to when you're in the moment, stop yourself for a second. Um, I'm going to give you three things that can help calm the acute stress next. But first, you can ask yourself, where am I going? Which of the three F's is taking over right now? Okay. Next, there are three ways to get from the amygdala right? Old part of the brain, fight or flight to, which I forgot to tell you, the rest or digest. There are two parts of the brain. The prefrontal cortex is in charge of logical thinking, creativity, all of the things that go away, right? Completely blow up when you're in fight or flight mode. Does that make sense, right? And you really can't be in both at the same time. You cannot be super stressed and you cannot be in logical creativity mode. So if you're sitting down to write a newsletter and you want to be creative, if you're sitting down to um, do work on your social media or anything where you need creativity or even logical thinking, you're going to have to get out of this part of your brain and into here. And there are pretty much three immediate ways that you can do that. And the first is breath. And we're going to do it together, a quick four by four by four method. Now, this is not the same as meditation. Meditation is coming later on. Um, that's next level. That's more black belt level that we're going to get to. Um, but this is immediate. This can, anyone can do at any moment, no matter where you are. Um, and I, if you have a, um, a breathing technique or practice, there are many, this is not the only one, put it in the chat 
chat box. I'm just curious what you like to do to calm yourself, to, to reset your nervous system, essentially. That's what it's doing. It, it um, uh, like activates the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve runs from the top of your head to your root. And when that becomes activated, that will immediately um, create a relaxation response in your body. So again, if you are feeling stressed, fearful, and anxious, um, here's where you go, first and foremost. Exercise, run, a lot of exercise, and I do love that. Um, but not, you know, in the moment, that takes a lot of work to then go lace up your sneakers, get outside for a run, right? Something quick, you need a few things in your toolbox. Quiet place, breathe mindfully and slow it all down. Fantastic. Workout garden, anything outdoors by yourself. I love these answers. Close your eyes and breathe. Great. So this technique is super simple and it's four counts on the inhale, four counts holding at the top, and four counts exhaling. As you inhale, we're going to do it together in a second. We inhale through the nose, we exhale through the mouth. On the inhale, I'm just going to show you for right? We expand the belly. It's belly breathing, right? Instead of here, when we breathe shallow breath here, we're not activating that relaxation response. This is where we get anxious. <laughs> Make sense, right? So we want to go into the belly. So on the inhale, we're going to fill up that belly. On the exhale, we're going to let it go. So your lungs are actually last to, um, to expand. Make sense? So we're going to do that together again. On the inhale, four, hold four, Exhale four. We're going to repeat that cycle three times. Ready? And inhale through the nose. Two, three, four. Hold it. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. And pause again. And inhale. Two, three, four. Hold it. Two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, and pause. One more time, and inhale, two, three, four. Hold it at the top, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, and let it go. Fantastic, how do we feel? I know that always just resets the nervous system calms me right down, and I hope for you too. Okay, I said there's three things that you can do. The second one is taking a panoramic view. So again, when our brain is in fight or flight mode, we're seeing, we're tunnel focused, right? We're only seeing the tiger in front of us. Does that make sense? So even just when we um, step outside and take a broader view of things physically, like literally and also figuratively, right? Both ways. When we take a panoramic view physically, we're actually getting outside, we're looking at the ocean, we're looking at the skyline um, and just expanding our viewpoint. And that automatically, again, starts to get you into this part of the brain. Also figuratively, right? If you can't step outside and really take a broader view, you're going to say, let me look at this problem from a panoramic view. Um, I like to watch myself on a movie screen, right? I actually project my story, what's going on in my head onto a movie screen that's just about in front of me, uh, um, just slightly on the horizon, right? Above and in front of me and I watch the movie screen and then I sit back, right? As the observer and I watch the movie of my life and I talk to that actor, <laughs> me, right, in the movie. Um, I do this a lot, again, with my, my teenagers that I work with that are suffering from anxiety, depression, etc. and just take a panoramic view of your life, right? The problems that we're so hyper-focused on become a lot smaller when we can take a broader view and think about the things that we can actually be grateful for, right? Our home, our families, um, everything else that, that brings us joy versus right now this coronavirus or you know whatever is, is the, the big main stressor of your life right now. Um, okay, great, so that was two. And the third thing um, that will help you, again, in the moment in acute stress 
is a greatest hits list, okay? Um, I love this. Uh, you can think it's a little corny if you want, but I actually have my greatest hits list written down. Now, when we are in stress, stress mode, and then we get into self-critical mode, um, the little voice in our head that is um, filled with self-criticism, it's going to look for proof. If you are telling yourself that you are a failure, you're going to fail, that this virus or whatever again is going on in your life is going to wipe you out, your brain is going to look for evidence of that being true. If you <clears throat> want to have evidence that you are a badass, that you have been through time, uh, tough times before, that you have been knocked down by life and you've bounced back up very quickly, right? This is where you can go. Um, memories have emotions that are almost embedded right into our psyche, into our subconscious. And when we recall those memories, it's a very powerful practice. Okay. So right now I want you to just jot down um, a few things, maybe at least three, if you can get up to 10, amazing, three, three to 10 greatest hits. That means things that you have gone through in your past. There's kind of two ways to look at this. Things that you have accomplished that have been mind blowing, amazing. You are so proud of them, right? When you think of them, you feel like confident. Again, you feel like a badass, like, oh my God, right? On mine are, are things like, achieving my first, second, third degree black belt, right? I know how much hard work and determination that I put into it. Um, starting my own business, moving to California with no clients and starting again, starting from scratch and building up, right? All of these things that I've accomplished over time. And I know you have a giant list of those. The other way to look at it is things that you have overcome. Again, those times in your life where you've been knocked down and you stood back up. For me, those things can be anything like even like losing my father out of the clear blue sky, um, healthiest man I knew. And from day one to seven, he was gone. Um, and it blew my mind. I, it shattered me. Um, but slowly, step by step, using all of the things that I'm, I'm going over in this thing, uh, presentation, right? I built myself back up. And I'm now even stronger because of that. Um, 9-11, right? Building myself back up little by little. And then I have a whole bunch of other things too that I haven't shared with people yet. And I'm sure they'll be in one of my keynotes a few years from now. But um, if anyone is brave enough, I would love to hear what's on your greatest hits list. And don't, please don't think that this is like um, you're bragging or anything like that. Just be proud of your accomplishments and know that you can lean on these things whenever you need to. Don't be shy. And if you are shy, you can even send me a private message and I can read it without saying your name if you'd like to. Anyone, anyone. And this might be your thing. This actually might be right? The, the whole global pandemic that we're all living through <laughs> um, might be the thing that you're moving through right now, that it does become part of your story. Wow. Ah! Amazing, Maureen. That's awesome. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Good. I, you know what? I love that because your greatest hits list, if you're really creative, you could do in songs if you want. If you relate to songs, like all these things, absolutely. But really your greatest hits list could look like, like I said, the, accomplished, the accomplishments that you've actually done in your life, that you've gone through, um, all of those greatest, greatest hits. <laughs> okay, great. I love everyone here is making a, a playlist for their greatest hits list. <laughs> And again, um, using visualization or anything like that um, is a great way to remember those memories and actually feel the feelings. That's the most important thing with, with recalling your greatest hits is to actually feel the feelings. Um, defending myself against other parents from my children's elementary school about a decision that one of the volunteer groups was doing. At a, yes, 
Thank you, Christine, for sharing that. Absolutely, Mama Bear came in strong and how to defend her kids. Absolutely, these are great examples, everybody. Again, sit tonight with a journal or just if that's part of your practices um, and just recall all of those amazing things that you've done in your life. And really, I know it sounds corny to give yourself a pat on the back, but just remember who you are. All the power is within you right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I love it. Okay, great. So those were the three um, mindset techniques that will help you get from amygdala, fight or flight, to prefrontal cortex, um, rest and digest mode pretty much in an instant. Okay, makes sense. We're going to move into the body, right? So in order, um, let me just go back and give you the intro first, but our bodies can be really resilient. Um, I am sure you know people that have bounced back from things like disease. Um, personally, I've worked with, I've worked with clients that have literally abused their bodies um, from starvation, right? How many, um, unfortunately, it's, a, it's prevalent mostly with females, but not always. I've actually worked with males too um, that have eating disorders and literally starve their bodies. And I've seen them make a full recovery. I've seen the opposite. I've seen people that binge on processed foods and literally give themselves lifestyle related diseases and make full recoveries, right? I've seen people get off medications, come back from injuries, all kinds of things where our body can, is built, it has built in mechanisms for healing. Um, and again, I'm sure you all have your examples of that. But the mental toll um, of this kind of chronic stress that we were referring to in the beginning. Again, whether you're feeling that right now or it's something in the future, right? You have these tools as prevention. While I was healing myself, mind, body, and spirit from 9-11, from that fried nervous system that I had, I started to realize like, oh, in order to um, continue this martial arts training, in order to do two classes instead of one, and I had to change my diet along the way. I had to get more rest along the way. Um, all these different um, things, again, that I'm going to talk about and under the body, there's three main objectives. Now, again, I know Florida people are healthier than usually than the um, rest of the country. So I'm going to take a little bit of a deep dive into certain things, but if there are more questions, et cetera, um, please put them in the chat box. And again, if you have any questions at the end of this, please let me know. Um, so the three things are, um, first we have to identify, like I said before, the things that impede, right, or get in the way, block our healing process, right? So in order to build a resilient body, we have to make sure we know what is actually feeding stress and anxiety. So again, this is really where the mind and body connect so, um, so importantly. And I think that we don't pay enough attention to this part. We don't realize that every decision that we make when we're feeding ourselves is either feeding peace, feeding, grounded, feeding, um, managing our blood sugar levels, feeding, right, health, or we're feeding stress, we're feeding more anxiety, we're feeding cancer cells, we're feeding bad bacteria in our gut. Does that make sense? Right? So it's really um, a different way to look at how we choose our foods. Now, just so you know, I am a nutritionist and I and not um, a super like strict and you know um, kind of person where my, me myself included or my clients would never eat these things. I think there's definitely um, room in anyone's life to include sugar, processed foods, caffeine, and alcohol. I think it's just um, important to take a step back and realize what part they're playing in our life. Um, and I'll take a little bit deeper dive into each one here. Um, the only one I'm not going to touch on really is alcohol. <laughs> um, it's it's because it's kind of obvious, right? Um, alcohol is a depressant. In the moment, it's going to make us feel good. It takes the edge off. Um, the only, and it's, like I said, it's fine to include it in your life. I would just um, know what your limits are and when it starts to get to, if it starts to get to a point where it 
where it disrupts your sleep at night is one thing I would just worry about because sleep is going to be an integral part about building resilience and boosting your immunity as well. Um, also, which is kind of the whole point of this next section, yes, resilience, but what does our body and our health really need to be resilient and to bounce back is a healthy immune system, right? So that's really where I'm going with this. So um, why caffeine? I know we all love it and I am amped up on my, my coffee, my Nespresso from this morning. <laughs> um, it was eight o'clock start time for me here on the West Coast. So um, I made sure I had that right away. Um, the, the conundrum or the problem is once we go past our limit and that limit is different for every person, it stimulates, well, caffeine itself is a stimulant. It stimulates our adrenal glands. glands. They are these um, tiny bean-shaped um, organs that sit on top of your kidneys that pump out those stress hormones that I was talking about, namely adrenaline, cortisol, norepinephrine. If you are over-caffeinated, those adrenal glands are going to be pumping out those stress hormones over and over and over again, right? And it can also worsen anxiety. People that suffer from anxiety um, know, most of them know anyway, that caffeine is going to make it worse. Um, and then, like I said, if it's uh, same with alcohol, if caffeine is impeding on your sleep, sleep is absolutely so important to our healing, to our resilience, to our immune system, then cutting back on your, your caffeine is going to be really important. Now, how much is too much? Like I said, everyone is different. There's actually a gene that can tell you, I will let you know in a second, Christine, um, that can tell you how well you process caffeine. But I think it's pretty obvious. You will know um, how many cups it takes you to get to that jittery, anxious feeling. Um, for me, I cap it at one strong cup of coffee in the morning. Um, anything afterwards, I'll have some green tea or something like that. In general, uh, you know, if you're walking around with venti Starbucks, which are about three cups of coffee in one, you're probably having too much. Um, and also it could make you dehydrated as well. So again, how much is too much? Around, I would say two cups for most people is that average. Okay, um, ah. so some healthy swaps, green, black, or white tea. What's great about green tea is yes, there are caffeine in it, but the way it's released in the body is different than coffee. The way green tea is released in the body is slower over time and steady. So it kind of gives you this nice flowing little buzz versus like a jolt of <laughs> caffeine, that coffee, where coffee is released like immediately. Um, and also in green, black, or white tea, you're going to get high antioxidants. Um, there's lots of studies how um, basically they're antioxidants, meaning they're basically eating up cancerous cells in your body, which is fantastic. And we all have cancer cells in our body currently, right in this moment, right? So it's really about managing those, getting all the antioxidants you can get. Matcha is amazing. I absolutely love it. So again, these can be your second choices um, throughout the day. Herbal teas, when I've been you know, I work from home a lot, minus the travel. Um, so when I'm going to the kitchen for the 44th time <laughs> of the day to bring it up, right, I'm going herbal tea, herbal tea, herbal tea. There's something about it, just this, the calming, the warmth, the, um, you know, it's just uh, feels comforting. If you, you know, I forgot to mention, because I'm sure no one really drinks soda on this call, um, but if that's your caffeine source, then Going to switching to a flavored sparkling water is another great way to swap. Matcha turmeric lattes, um, great again for anti inflammation, bring down inflammation levels in the body. Um, or low sugar cocoa, right? Cacao powder, anything like that. Great ideas. I have some mushroom powders that I love too. If anyone's interested, I'll put those in there. Just the, yes. Something about, and again, this is why some people love their coffee so much. It's about the routine, right? It's about the ritual of it, the getting up, going to the pot, right? All of it. The sound of my Nespresso maker is literally like heavenly sounds to me in the morning. Um, but then I make another ritual during the day, which is that herbal tea or green tea. Okay. Thank you for the questions. Um, 
obviously our bodies need to be hydrated. So if you are drinking too much caffeine, um, we need to make sure that we're drinking even more water to hydrate our bodies. In general, how much water should we be drinking? A lot of you probably know this already. Again, it's a it's an estimation because everybody's body is different, but about half of your body weight in ounces. Um, again, every cell in our body needs water. Our brains to keep us calm and remove brain fog. Um, muscle endurance, it's great for skin. It's great to eliminate toxins from our body, literally get things moving in the morning. Um, so what does that look like? If you're 200 pounds, that's 100 ounces of water, which is about three liters. If you're 150 pounds, 75 ounces of water, that's about two and a half um, liters of water, whatever it is for you. Again, you live in Florida, it's a hot climate. Um, if you're sweating more than most people without even realizing it, you're perspiring. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're replacing that water. If you're active, even more so. All right, moving on. Again, I know you guys know this stuff. Um, the sugar dilemma. Sugar right now is what a lot of people are craving. Obviously, why? Because sugar immediate lights up the pleasure centers in our brain. Dopamine, serotonin, happy chemicals. So if we're feeling bad and we're feeling stressed, our brains know that if we reach for that cookie, um, donut, whatever, whatever is your go-to, um, that right away we're gonna feel good until the slump, right? So sugar immediately spikes our blood sugar and insulin levels. And then on the tail end is where we start to crash. And in that crash, that's where you're feeding anxiety, you're feeding depression. If these are already part of things that you're working through, it's just going to exacerbate the problem. Um, it increases inflammation in the body, which I've already mentioned in the beginning and feeds bad bacteria in the gut. So our gut has good and bad bacteria. This is a very simplified um, definition of the microbiome. And when we start to have a diet high in processed foods and sugar, the bad starts to outweigh the good. Now, this bad is going to crave things. It's going to crave what it eats, right? And it basically, they eat sugar um, and processed carbohydrates. So it's when you get those cravings, those can be some of the reasons as well. So it's, again, it's good. This is what I work through with my clients is actually identifying the root causes of your cravings. What actually is going on in the body? Is it physiological? Because we automatically think we're just not disciplined and we're bad people. We're bad people, right? <laughs> when we go for those treats. But honestly, it could be a physiological um, imbalance that once we get into balance, it can actually solve that problem. Okay, so the other part of the conundrum or the dilemma is it's not just sugar, table sugar that we're adding in or soda that we don't drink, right? Or even if you're not a big sweets person, but are, are these other foods that turn into sugar immediately into your body um, when you digest them, when it starts the digestion process, um, are these a main part of your diet? Again, there, are room, there is room for these foods in your diet, um, but how much of your diet is actually a part of this? Again, I work a lot with teenagers. If you have children, and I've seen so many kids that this is like 90% of their diet, honestly, and they're anxious, and they're on all these medications, and honestly, I look at their diet, I go, no wonder why. Of course their brain can't function. Of course they're, they're anxious. Like it makes perfect sense. There's no nutrients in these foods, right? It's pure just sugar lighting up your brain. And on the other side of that light up is that crash. Okay, before I get on my, like my big soapbox, I'm gonna keep <laughs> moving forward. So this is like the money shot. Um, you can take a screenshot of this if you'd like. I know there it breaks every rule of presentations. There are way too many words on this screen. But here, you know, I just have to put it in there because if you are asking, well, that is a lot of the foods that either my kids eat or I eat, you know, um, what can I be eating? Well, this is what an anti-inflammatory diet looks like. This is what a diet of a healthy brain, right? Healthy moods, et cetera, look like. Can't, I said there's room for the other stuff, whether you're doing 90%, 10% of the process, or even 80% of foods like that come from this list, and then 20% of the times you're splurging on other things, whatever works for you. Um, but if you can look at this list and be like, oh yeah, you know, this is what my diet looks like, you are on track, 
right? You're doing really well. Um, I'm gonna move through this quickly. If you have any questions, like I said about this, put them in the chat box. Um, I just do wanna point out though, I put mushrooms as a whole line item because they don't fall into fruit, they don't fall into vegetable, and they are super functional. Um, I told you before, I, I drink a mushroom tea most days as um, that afternoon snack from Four Sigmatic is the company I love. There's others out there too, but they are functional. Uh, the matcha I have is actually from Four Sigmatic because it has mushrooms as well. Okay, so moving on. Movement, obviously, right? Um, and again, where where the mind body connect? That's all I'm interested in right now. I'm not. We're not talking about weight loss. We're not talking about even like physical prime health, optimal health. We're just talking about how we affect the body when we are stressed, when we are in overwhelm. Lacing up those sneakers and just going for a walk, getting outside, seeing that panoramic view while you're walking, right? Great ways to immediately change your state. Um, you know, again, if I had more time, I would go into how you're, you should definitely have all three, what makes up a good balanced exercise routine, cardio strength and flexibility. Um, strength, I can't say enough, especially for women, I would say from mid thirties and up is something you want to make sure that you have in your routine to help balance your hormones as you get older. Um, seeds, yes, sunflower seeds, absolutely in that seeds uh, those those weren't that wasn't an exhaustive list list of foods it was more just exam like the heading and then the examples so absolutely all seeds and nuts can fall into that um those lists and sorry i wasn't clear about that all right so how many of you are getting outside or doing something 30 minutes a day even if it's indoors i don't care um yes rebecca yes um Let's move on because I want it. This is like super simple, right? Sleep, obviously, absolutely. Please, please, please make sure you're sleeping enough. In when we sleep is when um, we're getting into that REM sleep, that deep sleep. This is where we're going to generate power, generate resilience. This is where our bodies actually heal and we release things called uh, human growth hormone, right? That keeps us young and vibrant. All of those things happen when we're sleeping. If you are not sleeping, those things aren't going to happen as well, right? They're not going to be as efficient. If you're digesting food, if you're eating too late at night and your body is digesting food when all of these other things are supposed to be happening on our circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm, um, you're not going to fall into these deep sleeps, right? And get all of those benefits. So you want to make sure that you're going to bed on a pretty much empty stomach. You're getting those seven to eight hours of sleep. And if you're not figuring out why, again, this is my job as a health coach. I get to the whys. We try to figure out what's impeding, what's going on, and then balance out those lifestyle factors. Awesome. There's a lot of people doing their exercise on this call. Okay, spirit. We have two main things that I want to cover under spirit. Um, spiritual, right? Uh, it's different for everyone, your spiritual practices. And I'm not talking about religion here, even though prayer could be a part of your spiritual practice. I saw that um, on the list earlier, which um, I commend you. Anything that helps bring you peace is wonderful. Meditation specifically, <laughs> okay? Um, I am the hugest proponent of, and I can tell you, it has changed my life. 100%, hands down, I know for sure why I have been so resilient, almost zen-like, I have to like to my own horn for a second during this whole pandemic, and my husband just got laid off. Like I am feeling pretty zen about it all. Why? I know it's because of my daily meditation practice. I do not skip a day. I know that it helped me back then, um, healing from 9-11 and, and my fried nervous system. We did mostly moving meditation, almost like a Tai Chi. Um, and now I'm, as I've gotten older, I'm doing more of the sitting meditation. Whatever works for you. And by the way, I have a moving meditation for you on YouTube if you'd like. I can send it to you all. I can at the end of this, find it and put it in the chat box. However, whatever works for you, you can um, probably find it on my website. I'll put that in the chat box. Uh, but it's just an eight step moving meditation, right? And it's super simple. You could do it from seated even, or you could just stand and really um, 
it really, it's a beautiful, first of all, movement, um, and it helps so many different ways. So this is the, there are many physical benefits of meditation, like lowering blood pressure, um, decreasing inflammation, there's that word again, um, all of those wonderful things. But here uh, are just the mental benefits, right? Enhancing creativity. Why? Because we're getting into this part of the, the brain again, right? All, it all comes full circle. This is what I love about the mind, body, spirit approach, right? Everything is connected and it all comes full, full circle. It creates that relaxation response. It helps build resilience. There's that word again, and deepens intuition. This is something I teach a lot in my realtor safety class, um, how to tap into our intuition, not, not just because it can help save your life, but when you are tapped into your intuition, you can make decisions quicker on the fly. You can deepen relationships with people, with potential clients, et cetera, because you can almost already know what they need to hear, not in a manipulative way, um, in a way that, like I said, deepens connection. Um, and I love, I just love working on intuition, how to build that and obviously decreases feelings of depression. These are studies that have been done, not just, you know, saying it out there because of my opinion. <laughs> um, so, uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day that, that just when he said this sentence I'm about to say, I was just like, oh, yes. What meditation does over time is it widens the gap between your thoughts and reactivity or your reaction, right, to those thoughts. So again, if your self-critical brain is taking over and you're saying that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not going to get through this, um, things aren't going to work out, right, and then you react on that right away usually, what meditation will do is give you that space to just think about it and possibly put in a new thought, right? Again, and that's something I'm, I teach a lot in my confidence course, which I will put in the chat as well. It's a free five-day course where I'll teach um, the greatest hits is in there as a, but there are a few other techniques that I teach called anchoring, where you're anchoring feelings into your body. Um, but also, um, it, it, you know, again, it's going to help the opposite of stress and fear, I think, is feeling confident, right? Feeling confident about um, your future, feeling confident about your skills, all of that. So in that course, I go over a bunch of different things like this as well. Um, but there's one of them, there's a meditation one um, day, one video where you'll actually anchor feelings into your body. Um, sorry, I think I went off on a tangent there, but anyway, I just love, I love this so much. Um, just think about that, how that could help you in your life. Where do you tend to go really reactionary, really fast? And where could just a bit of a pause, more of a gap help you in your life? Okay, and last but not least, social support is so important right now. Um, reaching out to friends. Um, you know, pulling in support, asking for help when you need it, asking for five minutes of their time to just talk it through is what we all need, I think, more than ever right now. Um, we shouldn't be social distancing, right? We should be physically distancing um, and socially connecting more than ever. Um, again, when, I, when I'm working with kids especially, but other clients too with eating disorders, things that are very focused on them, the best way to get somebody outside of that, right, is to literally step into someone else's shoes, go volunteer, go help out, you know, it's a comparison in a way, and I know comparison could be the thief of joy, but comparing yourself to people that just don't, aren't as privileged as you, right, and really appreciating what you do have is the quickest way to get out of self-criticism and poor me's and into gratitude. Um, okay, I'm going to take just any questions, but first I just wanted to review. Here's your list really quick of the eight different steps that we've covered. And if you go to um, my website, you'll see this picture or there'll be a pop-up that looks like this. Um, I truly believe that feeling like a badass is your birthright. And that's why I created that five-day course for free. It literally costs nothing. If you want to just drop your email, name and email in there, it'll automatically come into your inbox for the next five days. You'll get, you have to sign up and register and you'll get 
um, a reminder to go into the videos to watch the videos and then you can do the exercises but they're tools that you'll have for life um I, you know it is a five-day class but like i said the messages that i get back from people it's helped them do um do accomplish and just be more confident um which is wonderful which is my goal right it's my mission so um last but not least if you have any questions please email me directly. I'm an open book here. I love to share um, ideas or help. Instagram, if you're on there, or Facebook. Does anybody have any specific questions that you'd like to get answered right now? Also, I'd like to know, does everybody have at least one or two newish? I know it's probably not new to you. These things were all there all along, but are there one to two practices that you're going to take from these eight and really focus on over the next weeks, months, or years? Anyone? What was your biggest takeaway? Reading, greatest hits list, wonderful. And maybe it's just kind of that, that information about the brain just to understand it a little bit more. Meditation, wonderful. Meditation and playlists, self-care. Absolutely, this whole thing was about self-care. Anti-inflammatory tips, wonderful. Making little slight tweaks to your diet will help you. Um, amazing. Okay, any questions? Refreshing, self-care, great. Thank you. I want to thank you all so very much. Christine, thank you. Is there anything you want to chime in with? Well, I do have, um, it's not really a question, but um, I would love your take on it. If everybody, uh, I know we're, we're at the 12 o'clock or 12.02 hour. Mm -hmm. um, so I also meditate and I know I noticed that there were a number of people in the chat box that also said they med meditate on a, on a daily basis um, as I do. And so what I'd like to hear your take, because I have my own take, but I'd like to hear your take. For those of you who've dabbled in meditation or who are curious but don't know if you know how to do it, can you talk about that briefly, um, how to get into a practice? And that in and of itself, in my mind, is the key word, practice. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Because um, I'll be completely honest, it, it's... I'm, um, I don't know why I'm putting this out there, my age, I'm 43 now. And it took me all these years, even though I was right, third degree black belt, um, it took me probably until the last two years to get the practice, right? To make it a daily practice. And, it, and honestly, the word discipline, I know it kind of scares off a lot of people, but you need the discipline to actually sit and do the practice. Um, when I was, practicing my martial arts, like I said, we would always end the day or end the class with a moving meditation. I would also pretend I was napitating a lot when I was tired, like in between clients and would just sit and lay down and call it meditation, but it was really napping. Um, so really getting into the practice is, has, like I said, saved my life. Um, I use Insight Timer. I see the Calm app. My husband uses that. I love that. Um, and also what I did about a year and a half ago, I went in person and did a two day meditation mm. seminar. It was an intuition training specifically. The method was actually the Silva method. Um, Jose Silva was a meditation teacher. I believe he's passed away now, but his method still li lives on. Um, and it is very involved, but what I just took the basics and I've just continued to practice that over and over. Um, Mind Valley is another app um, podcast that I subscribe to. Um, Vishen Lakiani is the teacher there and he has a six phase meditation on his app that I think is really beautiful and it's a guided meditation and he walks through these different six phases. That's 20 minutes so it's a little more of an investment. Um, but the studies show that 11 to 20 minutes is where you're gonna get the, that's where you start to get all the mental benefits. So I went from 10 to 11 just to make sure that I get that, the, the, the start getting the benefits. How about you, Christine? Um, I mostly use Insight Timer as well. And what I love about that app, and no, I don't get paid to say this, but what I love about that app is that you can select 
from a variety of teachers. You can save them. So if you hear something that you really like, you can save it. You can download it on your phone, which I do, especially for when I'm flying. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, But you can choose the length of time. You can choose the kind of the qualifying topic. So depending on where my head's at and what my mood's in and what I really want to be thinking about, I can kind of pinpoint exact meditation that I'm going to do. Um, I've and, noticed Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, and I mean, I do it every morning. My And most of these people have heard me talk about this ad nauseum, but it is my morning routine is very regimented. It, and even during this COVID-19, it hasn't changed. I still get up early. I still do this. I still... Um, but, um, I will also find myself if it's the afternoon and maybe I'm feeling a slump rather than going for that coffee or that cookie or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll sit down and I'll put my headphones on and I will meditate for five to 10 minutes. And it's amazing. It just like, it recharges my battery. Absolutely. And, and people, and that's the common misnomer is people say, I don't have the time. I'm too busy, but at the same, but what it, it actually makes you more productive. So therefore you can get more done in less amount of time and feel good. You know, like it's amazing. The inside timer right now, just if any of you are fans of Elizabeth Gilbert, um, she has a new one on there. They asked her to do something for this resilient, you know, about building resilience and Russell Brandt I saw recently, like there's just so many, um, different teachers to choose from. Yeah. But there are a lot of good apps out there. And, and, um, and I, I think even the breathing that you did, that is to an extent, a form of meditation, because really to me, meditation is just closing out the outside world and distractions and just centering yourself. And um, when you are focusing on breathing, doing this box breathing is how I've learned to call it. Yeah. Because um, you are literally, in my mind, I am drawing a box as I'm counting to four and then that way and then that way and then that way Ooh. over and over. Um, but that is a form of meditation and it is a form of just losing sight and, and from the distractions in our world. And I mean, you could do that if you're sitting on, not that anybody takes buses anymore, but if you were sitting mm -hmm. on a bus or yeah. a subway. Subway. Um, you could do that. And it, it's, you know, it's great. So, yeah. Fantastic. Jen, you've been amazing. I really love this. I hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, it's, you know, it's always a good reminder to know how we need to be taking care of our mind, body, and spirit. Um, because that, that trifecta will make us soar. And, um, and I'm happy to say that Jen will be with us in August as our keynote speaker to, uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> to talk more about this and the art of badassery, yeah. um, as well as doing a smaller um, class for, um, for uh, you talked about uh, realtor safety and what that's all about. So yeah, we were gonna, we're going to think of a sexier name for realtor a sexier safety. name than, re than real estate safety, but yes, exactly. Um, so thank you so much. Does anybody have anything else to say or a question to ask her before we, before we end this call? Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much, Jen. And thank you everybody for joining us this morning. We will see you on Thursday where we have our very own Amy Snook, who will be teaching us about creating um, marketing videos while we are staying in place. So, um, so that will be on um, Thursday at 10 a.m., I believe, uh, East Coast time. So anyway, thank you, Jen, so much. Truly do appreciate your time. Thank you everybody for joining us. Have a great day. Bye.